Hi hey everybody, this is Keith Tanner here from Flying Miata and today we're going to talk about the 1.6 versus the 1.8 engines found in the NA and NB Miatas, which sounds like a, a terribly dry topic, so we'll try to keep this a little bit interesting. Um, but generally speaking, for years the 1.8 was the new engine, it was the big engine, it was one everyone wanted, but there's been a resurgence of interest in the 1.6 of late. And what I'm going to try to talk about today is why that might be and what is different about the two engines. Because there's a lot of bad information out there, as always. And there's a lot of misperceptions out there. And there's also stuff that people just don't know about them. So that's what I'm going to try to address. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. We will do our best to answer them live if you are put them in during this live uh, broadcast. If you put them in the future, we will answer them in the future. Um, so... My name is Keith Tanner. I've been involved in Miatas for a while now. I got my first one just over 30 years ago. I have had stock 1.6s. I have had turbocharged 1.6s. I've had turbocharged 1.8s. Um, I've had a highly modified high compression 1.6 with throttle bodies. I've had a highly modified high compression 1.8 that was bored out to 2 liters with throttle bodies. Um, I've obviously driven quite a few different variants of Miatas over the years. And so Here's a little bit of actual technical information, and here's a little bit of qualitative feel analysis, shall we say, of the two different engines. So I'm going to give, start off with a little bit of history, because everyone loves history. The, the B engine, B series engine, started off in, a, in the mid-80s, I think it was 83, 85, something like that, as a 1.3 in, in the 323. It got bored out eventually to 1.6. It got dual overhead cams. And when Mazda was looking for an engine for the Miata, they built a special variant of the 1.6 called the, BC, the BP, sorry, B6ZE, or ZE if you are outside the US. Um, and it's basically a high performance variant of the 1.6 engine. The dual overhead cams, the cams were chosen for a little more response. They tweaked a bunch of stuff and made a sports car engine out of it instead of an economy car engine. And when it came time that they needed a bigger engine for various reasons, I'll get into what that, what that is, they were out of room on the 1.6 block. You just couldn't bore it any bigger. So they effectively made a big block version. They took the whole engine and just scaled it up. So it's a very, very similar engine. The original, the, the 1.8 found in the NA cars, the 94 and 97 cars, is very, very similar to the 1.6 engine, but almost nothing crosses over because everything's just a little bit bigger. The block's longer. The head, you know, the, the bore spacing is different. Um, the bore is obviously different as well. Uh, which means the intake manifolds are different, the exhaust manifolds are different, they changed a bunch of stuff on the front of the engine in terms of water pump pulleys and that sort of thing. So there's almost no interchange, even though these engines are very, very close to being basically the same thing, just photocopied and enlarged. So the reason Mazda did that, and this is, this is based on research from the Yamaguchi books, which is a, a couple of books that Mazda put out when they launched the NA and the NB. These are great, fairly original source material. They come a lot, of, uh, a lot of insider information about the development of the car. If you get a chance to pick up a copy of these books, especially the NA one, um, they're very much worth having on your bookshelf. They're pretty interesting stuff. I'm going to read something from here later. But according to those books, the 1.8 came about because there was increased emissions regulations, as always. Um, there was an expectation of a little more weight because of increased crash protection requirements. And basically, Mazda needed a little more power to motivate what was going to be a slightly heavier car, and that's where the 1.8 came from. And the 1.8 kept evolving. That was the end of the line for the 1.6. 1993 Miata was basically the end of it. Variants of it sort of soldiered along a little bit. There was an entire other family of engines that was based on it. There's some potential for some interesting interchange there. They kept on going as far as 2013, I think. But um, generally speaking, in terms of the US availability, that was the end of the line for the 1.6. The 1.8 kept evolving. When the NB came out, um, Mazda did a bunch of tweaks to it. They came out, this is an NB engine right here, out of a 99, effectively. Um, they tweaked the head, they tweaked the, the port angles. They came up with this um, dual volume intake manifold, changed a bunch of little stuff on here. And then in 2001, they added VVT. So the biggest difference, really, between the 1.6 and the 1.8 is the 1.8 continued to evolve. It got a bunch of updates. Some of them showed up overseas on the 1.6, because the 1.6 did stick around overseas for mostly taxation reasons, uh, because of the way the European countries tax cars on engine displacement. But in the US, this, or North America, this is what we, this is what we saw. Doo -doo -doo. So uh, before I get into 
comparing the two of them. Do we have any questions over there, Mike? No, no, no questions worth mentioning, I suspect. No? OK, so the first question that we often get is, which one's better for making power? Which one's better at taking boost? Which one's better at better at better at? And from a sheerly quantitative standpoint, the 1.8 is the better engine. It is the one. <laughs> We've got celebrations going on in the background. Our own customer service department, there is a strong 1.8 versus 1.6 um, argument going on. So you'll always make more power with the 1.8. Even if it didn't have those evolutionary changes, it's just bigger. It's basically the same engine as the 1.6. You know, we're talking about the NA version here. But there's just more of it, and there's no replacement for displacement, like they say. I mean, you can put a big turbo on the 1.6 and jam a bunch of boost down its throat. But you can do the same thing to the 1.8 and it will make roughly 10% more power because of it. There's more options for upgrades with the better head, some of the improved intake manifold, stuff like that. So you've got, if you're trying to build a high power monster, the 1.8 is the better choice simply because it's got everything the 1.6 does, plus displacement, plus some improved parts. So for years, that's why the 1.6 was ignored. It was just the little cousin. Nobody really cared. It was the weak, the weak sister of the bunch. And because, because the 1.8 was actually in production longer as a Miata engine, there's probably more parts available for it. And also because that's what the power community aimed for, there were more parts available, et cetera. It's, it's one of those virtuous cycles. But if you look at them as more or less stock engines, if you look at them as without ripping out the internals and changing a bunch of stuff and swapping cams and engine management that sort of thing, if you look at the way they were tuned from the factory, the 1.6 is a better sports car engine. It was tuned to have high power, not low torque, or not, not lots of torque down the bottom end. It was designed to want to rev as much as possible. And I'll, I'll read you a quote. This is from one of Mazda's designers from when they were doing, <laughs> reading from the scripture, according to uh, Yamaguchi here. Um, this is a quote from one of the designers. And they said that their goal was a sports car engine whose consummate emphasis is on high RPM power not a combination of low-end torque and an acceptably good measure of power at higher RPM, as in sporty sedans and coupes. So that's what they got with the 1.6. They got a sports car engine. Um, as some of you may know, I have a mostly stock 1.6 in my fleet right now, and you have to rev that car. I mean, it's just there is no excuse for finding yourself coming off a corner at 2,000 RPM. It's just not going to respond. You've got to play with the car. You've got to work it to get the performance back. And having spent a couple of decades in the Miata performance industry, I know that everyone loves that, but they just want a little more low-end power. Just a little more low-end, just a little more on the bottom. And that's what Mazda responded to. They started tuning the engines to be more, to have a flatter torque curve, to have a fatter torque curve down the bottom, um, to basically have more torque down in the RPM range that you tend to use day to day. And this isn't just an NA versus NB thing. This is the NB engine went that direction. The NC engine went that direction. The ND engine went that direction. If you've ever driven an ND, you know that it's got a very large, nice flat torque curve, lots and lots of stuff at the bottom end of the curve. And in the early NDs, it was kind of at the expense of the top end. So Mazda has responded to the fact, to what people have asked for. People want a car that's just plain easier to drive on the street with more torque, et cetera. But the engine they originally built specifically for the Miata back in 1990 or back in the, in the late 80s was the 1.6. It was the nature of that car with the engine, the nature of that engine with a high RPM, not necessarily a lot of torque. I think it makes its peak torque at over 5,000 RPM, um, but an like engine you had to play with. And it actually, it repeated itself with the ND. The ND, as you may or may not know, is available in other countries with a 1.5. And that was actually the original variant to be um, developed. The two liter was added, I suspect, a little late in the game because American audiences wanted that torque. They wanted a slightly different engine, so Mazda shoehorned it in there. The engine suffered a little bit because of it for the first couple of years until they were able to do it, do a better job, I think, of shoehorning. <laughs> but, but if you talk to any Mazda insiders, they would have told you in 2016 that the real ND, the real Miata, was the 1.5 because it had that character of the original 1.6 engine, the original engine for the Miata. It was biased towards high RPM, it was playful, it wanted you to rev it. And we did get that back in 2019 with the ND2 when we got those changes to the, that new engine, it went to 181 horsepower. 
all those gains were above 6,000. It turned into a fun engine at six grand instead of just kind of losing interest at six grand. So we've got an engine in the new Miata that's got the character of that old 1.6 and a whole bunch more performance too. But Mazda has gone back to that original performance or that original character. And this is something I think we've seen lately because a Miata is simply not gonna be the fastest car on the road um, and it's becoming less and less so, especially if you're still driving an NA, they're not fast cars by today's standards. They never were fast cars. Other traffic has become even faster. So if you're gonna be driving a car that is not the fastest car on the road, you go for the quality of experience. And I think that's why the NC, the, the NC, I think that's why the, <laughs> it's so many numbers and letters. I think that's why the 1.6 has, has been seeing a resurgence because it is the purest experience that Mazda designed in the first place. I mean, it's, it's, it's what the intent was for a sports car engine. It's not as quick, but you know what? A 1.8 is not quick anymore anyway, unless, I mean, I know a car company that builds turbo kits for them. That will help. But it's just, it's got that purity that we were looking for originally. So there's my uh, soliloquy on the 1.6 versus the 1.8. You want power, you get yourself a 1.8. You want the original design intent of the car, you get yourself a 1.6. And Mike, you have your hand up. There's a question. Do you lose any of the purity of the 1.6 if you boost it? Do you lose any of the purity of the 1.6 if you boost it? I don't think so. Um, a lot of it comes down, basically, I think it's cam choice. That really is, if you look at the differences between the engines, there's not that much, as I mentioned earlier, not much difference between them. The 1.6 is a little higher compression than we saw in the 1.8 until late in the run, um, but mostly it's the cam choice. They just simply, they took out the economy car cams and they put in a sports car cam. It wakes up at 4,000 RPM, and even with boost, it still does that. So I don't think that, that boost takes away from its, uh, from its character. I'm gonna go to some of the questions that were sent in to us earlier. Does the 1.6 rev more quickly? Well, it has, it has a higher red line. I think it, I, I didn't get a chance to, confirm this, but it had a 7,200 RPM red line. I don't think Mazda got back to that 7,200 RPM until the ND2 came out. I'd have to double check that, but I don't know if the 1.8's ever had that engine RPM, or that, uh, that red line. Um, but again, it's all, it's all down to cams. So one question is, what parts are cross-compatible between the NA6 and the NA8? Now that's basically the 1.6 and the original version of the 1.8, which is just a slightly larger version. And the answer is not really very many. The rods are interchangeable. The lifters are interchangeable, cam gears, a couple of little drain external plug. bits and pieces. Mike? Drain, drain plug. The drain plug, the drain plug, spark plugs, if we can go, we we'll get there. But yeah, um, but in terms of the fundamental internals, there's really very little because basically everything's just a little bigger. You, know, you can't swap the intake manifolds because the port spacing is different. You can't swap the crank because the block's longer, et cetera. So there's not that many. There's not a lot of factory parts you can take off a 1A and swap in a 1.6 and get you know, unlock some, un some unknown power. One question is, which engine is better engineered for boost? Now, technically, you probably have to say the 1.8 because I think it's got a forged crank from the factory, whereas the 1.6 has a cast crank. In reality, crankshaft failure, strength failures just aren't a thing. I mean, there was a crankshaft nose design problem, early, especially in the early days. That's got nothing to do with forged cranks. So there's really not any difference when it comes to boosting them in terms of which one is better than the other because in terms of strength, in terms of holding together, they're basically the same engine. One question is, is there any benefit to the VVT that was added later, 2001 and later? Um, if you're looking for peak power, generally no. If you're looking for area under the curve, definitely yes, and especially in a naturally aspirated a application. Um, the main reason Mazda put it on there was for emissions reasons. It actually allowed them to get rid of an extra catalytic converter because it made it so much more efficient, so much cleaner burning, and efficiency is power, in another way to put it. Um, so there is definitely some advantage to VVT. It's more complicated to control. If you're trying to control it yourself with, a, uh, with an aftermarket ECU, you've got a lot more work to do to really optimize VVT. But there's a reason that every engine out there now has VVT on it. Mike, do you have another one? Uh, not at the moment. Okay, not yet, okay. Can you make a 1.6 as fast or faster than a 1.8 with basic bolt-ons? And by basic bolt-ons, I'm going to assume anything that doesn't take, involve taking off the valve cover, intake, header, exhaust. You can get them pretty similar to each other at that point, but the problem is then you can put the intake, header, and exhaust on the 1.8, and now you're back to where you were. 1.8's got 10% more, basically. So, yes, but. Is the 1.8 swap worth it if you already have a built and turbocharged 1.6? That's an interesting question because it depends on what your plans are. Um, you will notice, again, because of the stuff that changed, 
if you do swap a 1.8 into your 1.6 turbocharged car, which I've done, you're going to discover a lot of parts are not compatible. You know, the, the turbo, the expensive parts too, the turbo manifold, um, downpipe is different. Some of the intercooler routing is going to be different simply because stuff starts moving around. The intake, the um, throttle body inlet is in a different place. So you're looking at a lot of new parts if you're doing that. If you already built 1.6, you're just looking for a little more horsepower to, um, I don't know, impress people on forums so you can tell them on Facebook and tell you you've got 250 instead of 230 horsepower. It's not worth it. Um, if you're aiming towards a specific goal, maybe, but it's, the value is not strong. Uh, which is better and why is it the 1.6? That would be Ethan. Hi, Ethan. He's uh, working from home today, so there we go. Um, one of the questions is, is having more torque, does it actually make a difference to a normal daily driver? And the answer to that one is definitely. I mean, there's a reason that Mazda started putting all that extra bottom end in the cars because it does make them easier to drive day to day. You don't have to be at 5,000 RPM to keep up with traffic. If you find yourself coming off a corner at 2,000 RPM, you don't get punished for it as much. You can get away with it. Um, so having a lot of torque really does actually make it a more drivable car. And that's one of the reasons why the NDs are so much quicker than you expect them to be because they've got that big wide torque spread. It's not all about the peak power right at the red line, but they've got a lot of area under the curve, which makes them very quick in a lot of conditions. Um, even if you're not in the perfect gear or if you are, you know, you fall off the cam, you're not that far off the cam. So yeah, it definitely does make a difference. But again, if you're not going to be winning the races anyway, Go for the experience. Uh, which engine is easier to maintain? There's no difference. They maintain the same. There's, that's not, yeah. I mean, if you're looking to neglect it for 150,000 miles, they'll both break at the same time. If you're looking to take care of it, it's the same maintenance schedule. So there you go. And the last one I'm going to go to now before we go to some of the live questions is, does, why does the 1.8 VVT have a completely different spark plug setup than the other Miata engines? And for those who aren't familiar, on all of the other ones, there's a pair of coil packs on the back of the head here. And on the VVT engines, and the Mazda Speed as well, um, there's a sort of a semi-coil on plug setup. And it's not really different. It's got, well, they're here, aren't they? It's got a coil here, it's got a coil here, and then it's got a little short um, plug wire that goes down into the other, the other plug. It's a, I've got the arrangement wrong. I think it's the two middle ones, isn't it? Um, it's not really any different, honestly. It's not true sequential coil on plug stuff. It's just they've taken the coils off the back of the head, they put them here so that they've got basically no spark plug wire on two of them and a very short spark plug wire on the other one. It's partly packaging. Uh, it's most likely a loss of a um, little more efficiency. You don't have as much of a spark plug wire to traverse with the spark. But it's not really completely different. It's actually very similar. Um, when you start looking at individual coil on plugs, that's when things get interesting because then you've got sequential spark and we won't go into that today because it wasn't available on the 1.6 or the 1.8 from the factory in North America. So there we go. Um, Mike, do you have any other questions back there? Can you clarify that what you're saying is the better sports car is the 1.6? Is that Ethan? No. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, can you clarify that what you're saying is the better sports car engine is the 1.6? And yes, I will say that. I think the 1.6 is a better sports car engine. I think the 1.8 is a more effective engine. So take what you will from that. Um, like I said, I've got, I've got most varieties in my, in my garage. Uh, that little 1.6 that I built was a beautiful, beautiful jewel of an engine. The 2 liter that I built that was built to much the same recipe was a very effective engine. It didn't howl and yowl the way the other one did, mostly because of the cam choice. But the, uh, the 2 liter was, I mean, an extremely effective engine for the same amount of work, well, plus a crankshaft, um, in, a, in, a different, in a different platform. So yeah. I'm going to go with that. I'm going, to, I'm going to put it down there. I've got a bunch of 1.6s. I started with 1.6s. I still like 1.6s as long as I'm not competing with a 1.6. <laughs> if I'm looking to win a race, I'm going for displacement. Usually 6.2 liters, but you know, if I have to stay under 2 liters, I'll go with a 1.8. Mike, do you have anything else? Can you offer any condolences to the lesser 1.8 liter? Owners? Can I offer any condolences to the lesser 1.8 owners? Uh, well, you'll win the races. <laughs> <laughs> I, the, the one six versus one eight thing is actually pretty fun. It, it's the engine was was like the weak sister for so long. It was ignored for so long. It's fun to see people getting back into it again, and all the good-natured ribbing. The same way that we that we harass NC owners about their boats, and we harass. Well, I, I used to drive. I used to be a member of the uh, 
of the local Lotus Club when I lived in Ottawa, Canada, and this was before the Elise came out, so all the Lotuses were old. They'd make fun of my soulless Japanese sports car. I'd make fun of their unreliable English cars and offer to carry parts for them. We all had a good time. It's the same kind of thing. Do we have anything else going in there, Mike? Um, if you'd like to expand upon your Turbo 1.6 and how it felt driving it. Well, I'd like to expand upon my Turbo 1.6 and how it felt to drive. I didn't feel dramatically different than a Turbo 1.8, except that it did, you know, they, they like to rev a little bit more. Um, the turbocharging doesn't fundamentally change the character of the engine. It does add more down low, adds more up top. Um, it depends on what your limitations are. If you're limited by your injectors, you might be tapering the boost. There's a bunch of things you can do to shape the torque curve and the power delivery of a, of a turbo car, especially with something like an ND where you've got all sorts of control over different things. I'm not going to say that there's a night and day difference between their character, but I don't think that putting a snail on the 1.6 spoils it. So I'm going to go with that. So if you would like to make your own case for why your engine of choice is the superior one, please do so in the comments. Uh, I anticipate a lively comment section for this particular video. Um, and that's uh, pretty much what I've got going on for today. So <laughs> if you like this kind of thing, if you like this kind of discussion, please take part in our, in our live uh, broadcasts. You know the usual, like, comment, subscribe. We've got Facebook, we've got YouTube, we've got uh, Instagram, we've got, I think we've got Twitter now, although, you know, don't go there. Um, so get in touch with us, join in the party. Let's, have, let's talk about Miatas because it's more fun than talking about other things. And uh, we'll see you again next time. Keith Anner from Fly Miata, thanks for listening. <laughs>